I'm here to speak to you a little bit about the people in your circle, the people that you spend most of your time with, the people that you associate with. How do they impact your life? How do they influence you? Yeah, sometimes you'll be on social media, you'll be looking at certain people, on Facebook, etc. People can influence you in so many different ways. Are these people in your circle influencing you in a positive way? Are they driving you, empowering you, enabling you? Are they actually helping you develop and grow? Or are these people actually pulling you down? Are these people actually taking you in a direction where you could end up in destruction and pain? Now, for me, I had a circle that almost got me killed. I had a second circle that took me to heights that I could only dream of. So this is why looking at your peer group is absolutely imperative. You might have people in your lives right now that you think are cool and you want to be like or you want to do certain things. They're the popular group, but that doesn't always end well. Sometimes you've got to do things and hang around with and look at people that might not be popular but they're doing things that will be putting certain things in place that when they do get a job in the future, they're going to be successful, they're going to be happy. Now, for me, I grew up in an area of deprivation. There wasn't much opportunities. My dad was at work most of the time, so he was doing long shifts. I didn't get to see him much. My mum was suffering from me mental health issues. There was 10 of us in the family. It was very difficult for her to get around and, and try and take care of all of us. And because my dad wasn't there, I didn't get much guidance and direction, that arm around me to show me, son, that's right or that's wrong. So for me, I spent most of my time on the streets. I was out there looking at other people. And in my area, there was a lot of people selling drugs in criminality, people that were doing bad things to make a living. Then there was other people that were on the dole or people were just taking drugs and alcoholics. I didn't have much people to aspire to or look up to and think, you know what, I want to be like you. So the people that I looked up to were selling drugs. They were in, cri in criminal gangs, people that were driving nice cars and, and wearing nice clothes and had the kudos. So I started hanging around with them circles and people used to say to me, other people, don't hang around with these guys because they're going to get you into trouble. And I used to say, no, 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 I'm not going to get into trouble. There's no chance. But there's a saying that says, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later, you're going to get a haircut. And that's exactly what happened to me. I ended up in criminality. I ended up a part of this group of people doing criminal activity to make money. Now, for me, it was, it was very difficult because once you get into that, very quickly, you end up getting a criminal record. At the time, I thought it was an accolade. This is cool. I've got a criminal record. I've, I've been arrested and whatever. And people started to say, yeah, this is, this is cool. But the people around me were doing that. But I started to realize very quickly that it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool to have a criminal record because it prevented me from accessing opportunities later on in my future. It prevented me from going into certain environments where people would stereotype me, stigmatize me, and put, labelize me and put me in a group. Made me feel very deflated and very worthless. So it actually helped made me go more into criminality and more ingrained in, in the wrong sort of people, people that would encourage me to be violent, encourage me to get into criminal behavior and continue to go down that path of destruction. So for me, one thing changed very quickly. I can remember I was getting chased by the police and I was running through the sports center. I probably got away from him because he didn't come in after me, but I opened these doors and there was a boxing gym and it was people from all races, all religions, all cultures, everybody was there from different walks of life. And I thought, wow, and nobody looked down at me, nobody judged me, nothing. It was just like I was normal for that quick second. So I went in and I spoke to the coach and the coach goes, yeah, son, if you want to train, no problem. I'd never experienced that sort of thing before. It was absolutely amazing. 
I started to come there every single day and learn of different people. I started to have a dialogue with people that I'd never met before. People that were living normal jobs. People that were actually going to school and college and people that had um, going on holidays and and they didn't have to look behind them that police are going to kick down the door or they didn't have to think that they need to carry a weapon to protect themselves. These were normal people. I was intrigued. I wanted to know more. So after training, I used to talk to them and learn from them and, and slowly I started to hang around with these sort of people. And these people started to make me have aspirations in my life, made me have goals in my life, made me feel like I want to do better rather than end up in prison or worse, even dead. So by hanging around with these people and going to this boxing gym and venting my anger because I seen a lot of things while I was on the streets. One time, one of my friends got stabbed in the heart. I had him in my arms and I actually seen the light go out of his eyes and stiffen up in my arms. I can never forget that moment. It sticks with me every day. I was traumatized. As a child, I'd seen a lot of things that traumatized me. Another one of my friends got sent down for murder. Rest of his life all gone. My community was traumatized. It affected not just the perpetrator and the victim, it affected hundreds of people within our community. From the mother and father to the family to the friends to even the shopkeeper, everybody was affected. I wanted to do something to change my community. I wanted to do something. So I started speaking to people at the boxing gym, people that might have been lawyers, whatever, people that I would have probably never had dialogue with in my whole life. But that was a chance where it was a social leveler. It was a place where every kind of class, race, everything was, it was dissolved. So that used to be my safe haven. I used to always go to the boxing gym. One, I've made me feel better and worth something. And second, it actually gave me a, a way of dialoguing with people that actually could talk sense to me. And these were seeds that were resonating in my mind and helping me change as a person and starting to look at things differently, changing my perspective on things. So... My boxing started to do well. I was aspiring to become a professional fighter. I really wanted to do that. I thought becoming a professional fighter will give me a route out of this hell that I was living in. So I started to um, train and aspire to do that. But one day, it was a real tragic day in my life. I can remember coming back. I was out with a few of my friends and I was walking down the street and I seen four guys that I didn't get along with. Four guys that in their eyes, I knew they were serious. They wanted to damage me. And I looked behind and there was this big wall behind me. There was no way I could get out unless I go through them. All of a sudden, one of them pulled this big machete out, this big long machete. And he goes, take all your things out of your pocket and whatever. And at the time, two weeks before, I just lost my dad, just as I was building a relationship with him. So I was already down and out and really upset because I lost somebody that I was just starting, a positive role model that, that was, I was building that relationship with. And this guy wanted his watch, and that's what was on my hand. So I was saying, nah, I don't want to give you that watch. And all of a sudden, this machete comes straight from my head. I put my hands up and it just went straight through that hand and I could see my hand hanging. Again, it was hacking at me. I was putting my hands up and if I didn't box, I would have kept done that. If I'd done that, it would have gone through there and I wouldn't be here standing talking to you guys today. But it went through my hands. I collapsed. I ended up in hospital. When I woke up, the doctor says to me, son, you're dead for a minute, but we brought you back. Luckily for me, that was like a second chance. When I got brought back, the doctor says to me, there's no chance you can box again, mate. There's no chance. You, you just forget about that. At that particular moment, my life was distraught. I'd lost everything. My dreams, my aspirations were to become a professional fighter. It was all gone. I didn't have no qualifications. I had a criminal record. I didn't know I had no opportunities. Everybody looked at me and told me all my life, that ain't going to be nothing. You're dumb. You're worthless. You ain't going to be nobody. But the people 
who I thought cared about me and loved me were my people that I grew up with, people that were, I was rolling in these gangs with. Now, the first call I got was, yo, you need to deal with these guys, you know, that, 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 that disrespecting us and this, that, and the other. And instead of asking me, am I okay? Are you all right? Do you need anything? The people that I met at the boxing gym, they were there coming in with Lucas Aid and flowers and, you're all right, mate, you don't worry about it. You can act. That made me realize different groups of people. At that time, I started to leave some of them. It was very hard for me. It was very hard to leave people you grew up with, even family members, but I had to make that difficult decision and leave them behind and bring new people in my life, people that made me feel better, people that picked me up when I was down, people that gave me hope, people that gave me dreams, and people that helped me, enable me to do things. In life, you've got enablers and you've got disablers. You've got radiators and drains. Have a look at your circle and see who you've got. People that get you into trouble or people that actually help you make feel better about yourself, who you can talk to. Not the people that are going to take advantage of you or actually take the mickey out of you. So for me, that was the time where I thought, what am I going to do with my life? I got, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't box anymore. And then that's when somebody says, go back to college. Go back to college and do something constructive with your life. Maybe injury rehabilitation and sports therapy. So I started to go back to college and I knocked on the principal's door and I says, can I do an injury rehabilitation course? Um, have you got any GCSEs? No, I've got nothing. I've got no qualifications whatsoever. Principal, are you having a laugh? Why, could, why well, am I going to let you do a level three qualification when you've got no GCSEs, no nothing? So I said, please, let me have this opportunity. And she says, no. So I came back the next day and I knocked on her door again. She says no. I came back on her and I knocked on... She was so fed up seeing with me. So she goes, look, you can't keep coming and knocking on my door. So I said, look, give me a chance, miss. So she gave me a chance by saying, I'll give you a week. And in that week, if you can keep up with the work that everybody else is doing, you can stay. And if you can't, please don't come back. I stayed there for a week, for a month, and three years, and I graduated with one of the best grades in the whole class. Do you know why? Because I knew what my why was. Before, when I was at school, I didn't know what my why was. Nobody told me how important education is. Education is the most powerful thing in the world. It can take you to wherever you want to go. Everybody in here has a gift. It can take you to wherever you want to go. I didn't know that. Nobody told me that. Nobody told me how important it was. I just thought it was a load of teachers shouting at you, telling you about trigonometry. How is that going to help me? But it does. It does. So after graduating, I tried to get a job. I couldn't get a job still because I had a criminal record. So again, I went back. I was down and out. And these so-called friends circles and the best people in my life says to me, why don't you volunteer? So I started to volunteer at a place called Headway where it was helping people with head injuries. My dad had a stroke, so it, it related to me. I met new people there. I met people that were in management, in leadership roles. One of them says to me, look, you've got all this list of qualifications. Why don't you get a job in a sports centre? So she spoke to somebody. They got me a job, overlooked my criminal record and let me work. Now, all I wanted to do was prove that I could work. I was the first one there, the last one out. I was on every course. I started believing in myself. If I could do this, I could do anything. So I was doing all these qualifications and started to think I'm actually cleverer than people thought I was. Then I was a centre attendant. And from being a centre attendant, nine months, I was managing the whole place. Whilst I was managing the place, I started seeing people like me. People that were isolated, people that were lost, people that were hurt, people that were, had nobody. So what I did is I set an organisation up that supported young people, similar to an organisation that helped me. This organisation was all about having a safe, inclusive environment that supported people. And we used the power of sport, boxing. It was a great way of people channeling the anger and aggression, helping them with communication, life skills, social skills. And then I had an arm that gave them the mentoring, that father figure, that support, that 
somebody to guide them and direct them. Then counselling to help them get rid of their demons, get rid of any kind of trauma that they had. And education to be able to help people to learn numeracy and literacy. That organisation took off and we had loads of business partners that then we could help people get jobs. And it was a model that really worked. And all of a sudden, it picked up. Today, this model has been replicated in Denmark. It's been given advice to the president of Norway about radicalization and extremism. I've been at different conferences in Brazil, Los Angeles. I've, had, I've been awarded a British Empire Medal and I've won the BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award. Now, I've been speaking at conferences with people worldwide. I've got networks of people that are actually running national organisations. These people are actually driving me and inspiring me to be a better person. And then st I'm standing here in front of you, not as that person that I was that was lost and isolated, because of the group of people that I'm with now and the people that have been inspiring me and energising me and picking me up when I'm down, my organisation's been internationally recognised. I've had national and international awards and I owe that to the people around me, my circle, my tribe, my positive people that have picked me up, that have gave me support, that have gave me guidance and direction and, and believed in me to give me the confidence of what I do today. And I ask you guys to look at your circle, surround yourself with positive people, people that empower you, people that support you, people that will pick you up when you're down, people that you can actually talk to about anything that's concerning you. And that will enable you to be successful. That will be able, enable you to get to where you want to be and live and achieve your dreams. And when you get there, don't just aspire to make a living, aspire to make a difference. Thank you very much.